Hey, this is Jonathan with the Generate Press team. And in this video, we're gonna cover how to build a query using the new query block in Generate Blocks 2.0. Now, to start off with, let me just go ahead and drop in the query element itself. And this has been renamed from query loop prior to generate blocks 2.0 because there's a lot more flexibility. So we're just going to search query here and click on this, and then let's pick one of these standard layouts. So we'll just choose this two columns and featured image option here. And you can see now that it's loaded, it looks perfectly fine. We have all the normal stuff you would want, like our post featured image. We have the post title, date, excerpt, and then down below we have the read more. Let me go ahead and expand this here in the list view. And when we take a look at the looper element here inside of the query block itself, this has now replaced the grid block that was present prior to generate blocks 2.0. The benefit of this is that under the hood, this is essentially just a container, but it behaves in the way that we need it to, to replicate out our posts and kind of be the container here. Another huge thing is that all of the styling controls that you're familiar with in generate blocks are now present on this looper. So what this means is that by default, because we chose that two column layout, it's gonna set the display of grid, give us a little column and row gap, and then set a grid template columns. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and change this here to a three column layout. In my particular case here, it's a little cram, so you might not want to do that, but you get the idea. Same thing is true if I switch back over here to this settings tab, I have a couple of these common controls that you would need, like the ability to set how many columns you have or change the tag of the entire looper container itself. I'm gonna go back to the 50-50 layout here because this is a pretty standard one that we're gonna work with for now. And then I wanted to go one step further inside of this loop item. And we can see that in this settings tab, we have the tag name of div and we have a couple other options here. You would commonly use a tag of article and we can switch the individual loop items to article tags now instead of divs. And then of course, we also have the fully featured styles control on this loop item. So everything that you could do before with global styles, you can now do directly to this individual element. And it being inside the looper means it will just be replicated out to all the other posts. Now, what I wanted to do in this video is just show you how you can use the new dynamic tag system to build this from the ground up. So before I delete this query and we start from scratch, let's go ahead and just click on this headline and we can see that what's actually taking place here is that we're using the new generate blocks dynamic tag system to build this content here in the loop. Now, by default, if I go to the query, then I click on the settings tab, it's going to be set as a post query. And then the post type is just the standard WordPress post. Now, earlier I mentioned the query block is much more powerful than before, and that's due in large part to the query type options here. If we expand that, we can see we have post meta, and this is going to allow us to query a lot of really awesome things like ACF repeaters, post object fields, and more that we'll cover in future videos, as well as from options tables. So this opens up a whole world of flexibility for us. For now, we're gonna keep it simple and just do a regular old post query. And so what's happening is, again, when I click on this headline, we're bringing in the post title. And so we have it set to a preview, but what we can do is edit this, and there's a ton of ways that we can work with this. So if you wanted to add your own text before this dynamic tag, you certainly could. You could say, you know, read this post. Then we could switch this back to the preview mode, and we can see that that's now replicated to all of our posts in this loop. This of course means that if we go back into edit mode, we can add anything we want before or after that dynamic tag. And of course we can add multiple dynamic tags to one single headline or one individual text element if we need to. So let's actually work with these dynamic tags from the ground up. So let's go ahead and just delete this query block and we're just going to add a new query block here. And in this case, I'm going to start blank. So what this is going to do is essentially just give me my looper and my loop item, and I just need to build it out myself. So let's start off with a headline element, generate blocks headline, and the tag of H2 is probably what we would wanna work with here. Like I already showed you, the query is going to default to just standard WordPress posts, so that'll work perfectly fine in our case here. And then to actually bring in some useful information, we would click on this dynamic tags button here, which brings up our little dynamic tags window, and we have a ton of different options here. So of course, in this case, we're just gonna do post title. The source is current post, link to, this will mean that if I click on it, what happens? And we want it to link to the individual post. Then we're going to insert this and there we go. It's now looping through all of my posts on the site and bringing in their post title as well as linking them. Now, if we take a look here, we're only seeing 10 of our posts and that's because on the query itself, we have our posts per page of 10. However, we can go ahead and just add in pagination automatically with this button right here. So if we click add pagination down here at the bottom, then we can see the steps are going to be replicated and we can style these however you need to, because of course, these are just using standard generate blocks components 
like containers and buttons. Let's keep going here and build out some more content and we'll make it look better in just a moment. So let's say we're gonna go add before. We can pop in a generate blocks image element right here, this blue icon. And what we'll do in this case is over here on the right hand side in the settings tab, we can see the image and then that same dynamic tags button. We're gonna click on that, select dynamic tag will be post featured image URL. In this case, we probably don't need the image size to be full because we're gonna shrink the width here to be that 50-50 column layout again. So something like medium is probably gonna be perfectly fine just based on how small these image blocks are actually going to be. We'll go ahead and insert this dynamic tag and we can see, there we go, the image is being brought in perfectly. Now we can also go to the link. In this case, we would want to go to the post permalink if somebody clicks on the image. If we did featured image URL here, it's just gonna take them directly to that URL, which of course in this post loop example, we don't want. So we're gonna go with post permalink insert. And now when somebody clicks on that image, it's gonna take them to the post just like it will when they click on the headline itself. So now let's go to the looper. And what I wanna do here is in this design section, we're gonna make this a 50-50 layout like this. So we can go to column. Now that we have this two column layout set up, let's make the individual loop item look a bit better here. So what I wanna do is on the loop item, I'm gonna switch over here to the styles tab. And you might've seen this in some of our other videos, but we now have the ability to search through all of the styling controls. So for example, I could type in PAD for padding, or I could type the whole word, and then let's say in this case, we want one rim of padding on all sides. And then let's say the next thing we wanted is both border and box shadow. We could just type in border comma shadow and the controls are filtered down just to show us things that match those specific keywords. So in this case, maybe we just want a one pixel border on all sides and maybe we want it to be like a lighter gray with a reduction in opacity to maybe 30%. Then let's say we want a box shadow here. So there's just a standard box shadow here, something nice and simple. But of course, all these individual blocks are now touching, which we don't really want. So we would just switch up to the looper. We can clear out this control and we can just type in the keyword gap here in this case. So column gap and row gap, one rim is gonna be sufficient in this case. Things are starting to spread out, this looks great. But our headline here is just a bit too big. So what I could just do is type in the word size, font size here, let's just go with something like 1.5 rem, make it a decent bit smaller, it's starting to look much better. Let's go ahead and add in a generate blocks text line. So we can see that we now have a specific block from generate blocks for text here. And we can always switch back and forth between text and any of the other heading properties that we want. So if you had an H2 and you wanted to switch it to paragraph, you can go ahead and do that. So in this case, I'm going to again, go to dynamic tags. We're gonna go with post excerpt, excerpt length. Let's just do something like, you know, 20. And then we can go ahead and put in a read more text link here. So I'm gonna type in read more like that. And you can see it's starting to build this tag for us. So we'll go with insert dynamic tag. And then let's add in one more text line here. And what I'll do is just type in the text last updated. Then we're going to insert a dynamic tag. And then there should be a tag here for modified date. So I'll just search for that. We don't need it to link or anything. I just perhaps want to display this information to my reader so they know how recently this was updated. We can insert that tag. And there we go. Now we have our prepend text right before that dynamic tag. Now in this case, we did make this image a little bit smaller than perhaps it should be. So what we could do is come back over here to the settings option. And in this case, I'm just gonna go back to this and change the image size from medium to large. And that both looks a whole lot better and fits our card better. One other thing we might wanna do in this case is just find our margin property here and our margin bottom, maybe something like 1.5 rem, just to space out our container here just a little bit. And then if we save and go take a look at this on the front end, here is our query built out using the new dynamic tag system. Of course, we've done this relatively simply, just using a couple of tags here, but we're barely scratching the surface. I wanted to give you an idea of how the query block now works, as well as how to use the dynamic tags. In future episodes, we're gonna cover things like pulling data from ACF repeaters, building a dynamic related post loop using a query loop and something like a post object field. And there's so much more we can cover. If you have specific questions on how all of this works or ideas for other tutorials, please drop them in the comments below. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.